hello everyone and welcome to Vlogana Everything and welcome back to the channel and welcome to an upload that I never thought I'd even be making. I was out here just trying to conserve energy for my, you know, preview of the match against the Tafe, which should be happening on Thursday. Will it even happen? I don't know. But of course, something ridiculous has happened over the past three nights and that something is the announcement of the European Super League. And I just want to talk briefly about what this means for football and why, for me, it's been a long time coming. And more importantly, what the implications are for our beloved FC Barcelona. So, in case any of you are wondering what the Super League is, it's basically 12 of Europe's biggest clubs, you know, in terms of financial power. They came together and they decided, alongside investment bank JP Morgan, that they want to create a new tournament to replace the UEFA Champions League. So this tournament would be a league comprised of 20 teams with 15 founding members and 5 guest teams. And so far though, only 12 of the 15 founding members have been announced. And those 12 teams are Juventus, Inter Milan, AC Milan, Arsenal, <laughs> Tottenham, yeah, right. Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester United, Manchester City, Atletico de Madrid, Real Madrid, and of course our beloved FC Barcelona. These founding members are then apparently going to receive a payment amounting to 300 million euros, just as a signing on bonus of sorts. The whole idea for it, as explained by Florentino Perez, is that 12 teams want to play big games more often so that they can generate more revenue in order to stave off extinction owing to the economic impact of COVID-19 which has seen teams like Barcelona and Real Madrid lose out on as much as 400 million in revenue. That's according to Florentino Perez. So what exactly would this mean for football? Well, we can first start by looking at it from the perspective of the people who this is a direct attack on. That would be UEFA and FIFA, of course. So for UEFA, that would basically mean that they would lose out on the TV broadcasting revenue that these 12 teams command, in particular the Premier League's Big Six as well as La Liga's two giants, Barcelona and Real Madrid. Dr. Kenneth Kortsen, a sports economist at the University College of Northern Denmark, said in a Forbes interview, there is a lot at stake for FIFA, UEFA and the national federations. They know that the big clubs have a lot of negotiating power and a lot of consumer appeal because they have the best players. What's at stake here is football's integrity, identity and so, but also significant resources in terms of revenues that UEFA would like to protect. For UEFA, that revenue is the best part of 4 billion generated across all its operations. So it's no surprise that we have seen FIFA, UEFA, English and the Spanish and Italian FAs all push back against the formation of the Super League, even going as far as to threaten to ban players of Super League teams from playing internationals as well as participating in their local leagues. And of course, on the perspective of the local leagues, you don't really want you know, a bunch of clubs coming in with like 300 million to burn on buying players, you know, and paying salaries because then the quality between them and the worst team in the league is just going to be like, you know, it's bad enough right now comparing Barcelona and Real Madrid to like, you know, Huesca and Elche. Like imagine if Barca and Real Madrid have that extra 300 million to spend. That's killing a league. The central message coming from the governing bodies has of course been about protecting the soul of football as they claim that the formation of this Super League is nothing more than an attack on football by greedy elitists who do not care about the smaller guy or about the fans who have invested their lives and their passion into the game. This coming from the people that gave Qatar a World Cup. <laughs> We have since seen fans and even politicians come out to condemn the moves being made by the 12 clubs in looking to establish this Super League and there has been widespread condemnation for the way that these clubs, some of whom claim to be more than a club, some of whom say you never walk alone, <laughs> yet here they are parting from the true spirit of football and their founding fathers you know, founding fathers of those clubs. So ultimately, what are the ramifications of all this? And also, what are my thoughts on it? I'll start with my thoughts on it. Personally, 
you would not be amiss to describe me as something of a creepist in that I do believe in the ideals and traditions and passions that football carried with it back in the days, you know, and the past 10 or so years though, I've been slowly awakening to the reality of what football at the highest level really is about and it's really, it's just a cash cow for the people in the driver's seat. Bartomeu is probably the best example of this, just looking at what he has done with the club we know and love and to the extent that he's left us in a position where even arguably our greatest president can't walk away from a free 300 million being dangled in front of him. Furthermore, I think that this entire kerfuffle has exposed the true hearts of the people governing football because, like Patrick Bamfordinho, leading man of my beloved Leeds United said, it says a lot that there is more outrage over greedy people losing out on money than there is when a player is racially abused. Sentiments that were also echoed by Shaka Hislop from ESPN FC. Have a look at that video as well, it's linked in the description. So finally, what does all this mean for football? Well personally, I think that these 12 clubs are trying to bluff UEFA into giving them more money in these negotiations for you know the new Champions League format. Florentino Perez, who happens to be the president of the ESL, surprise surprise, gave an interview where he put a lot of emphasis on the fact that UEFA are not transparent when it comes to revealing what kind of money they make and how they spend it on things like staff salaries. We know how much LeBron James gets, why don't we know what you get? He asked UEFA President Seferin. 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 So it's ultimately about money and getting more of it to ease financial woes. Dr. Kotzen further said in his Forbes interview, I believe with the things that we have seen so far that it will end with a compromise between FIFA, UEFA, national football associations and the leagues and these 12 clubs. I am in agreement with him, but I would also further add that we will probably see a new power dynamic emerge whereby FIFA and UEFA will not have the same sort of monopoly over decision making that they have up to now enjoyed. Well guys, that's what I think about the Super League and all the drama we are watching unfold. It's really been like being the poor person stuck in an episode of Billions, to be honest. You know, just like watching Bobby Axelrod toy with everybody. But ultimately, I still want to believe in the ideals that Barcelona became famous for. And hopefully, Laporta can say something that will help us see some sanity in all of this. But until then, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have a great day, guys. And Forza Barca. But like, unforza Super League. The opposite of Forza Super League.